Welcome back. W Gold Cup qualifiers kick off this weekend. Tomorrow, Guyana face the Dominican Republic. Uh, Haiti face Puerto Rico and El Salvador take on Guatemala. Those matches on the Galazzo Network. You can watch it right here. And uh, to help us set the stage for the W Gold Cup, we are absolutely delighted to welcome in our good friend Lisa Carlin. Hello, Lisa. Thank you. Rocking the uh, the kit today. Oh, sorry, did I miss up the? Uh, I missed. Eh, whatever. That was the USA's group. Guys, it's Friday. <laughs> I'm done. There's I'm, I'm happy here. to be here, Suze. Yes, I am wearing a kit because the U.S. is playing in that group. Yeah. That so the all. U.S. will face the winner of Guyana and Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is correct. That's how this works. Um, Nailed it. Yeah. I know. Guys, it is Friday. There's like two segments left in this show. It's been a long week. <laughs> Champions League weeks are rough. Let yeah. me tell you. We have a day with Taco Bell's drive through to uh, get to. That's exactly <laughs> true. Um, so, okay, Lisa, let's talk about the, the U.S. and what we can expect from them in this competition because it's kind of, it's a, it's a new look. I know Twyla Kilgore is still mm -hmm. the coach. We're waiting for the arrival of Emma Hayes uh, this summer. But what, what is this team going to look like, do you think? I'm hoping we get changes, yeah, and I think we will, frankly, with what we already saw the U.S. did when they played their final matches of 2023 against China PR. There's a lot of youth brought into this roster. It's a turning of a page. It's bringing in uh, eight defenders, four center backs, four outside backs. Susanna, that tells me formation change. Yeah. I want to see five mm -hmm. in the back, or excuse me, three in the back, five in the midfield with wing backs. Um, it's an opportunity for the United States to try different things because there are less than six months until the Olympics, mm -hmm. and the test starts now for them. Yeah. So speaking of the back, though, we yeah. have the swap Alana Cook for Becky Sauerbrunn. What do you make of that? What does that look like? Do we think Becky gets armband? I think if she's on the field, she might. But it'll be Lindsay Horan with the armband. Um, that's who's been the captain. That's who's going to lead this team moving forward. The swap of Becky Sauerbrunn coming in for Alana Cook is 100% like for like. They're both center backs. They both have veteran experience. Alana Cook injured in her preseason with Seattle for the NWSL season. And bringing Be Becky in is, frankly, a really good move because it's not going to shake things up too much. I love Becky, too. She's a really good <laughs> veteran presence that can just add calmness and stability to a team that has a lot that's already shaken up. And even if we don't get to see Sauerbrunn on the field that much, she just provides a presence for this team that is calmness. And she can help these younger players direct and lead, including uh, Naomi Gurma, who will be starting in that back line. And we'll have a lot of pressure on her if there is a formation change to be that center center back in a back three. Uh, looking at their, their group, we've got Mexico, Argentina, and then the winner of Guyana and Dominican Republic. Uh, who, who scares you in this group who's going to give the U.S. the most trouble? I think Mexico will. Honestly, this is a team that's missed out on the last two World Cups. They've been struggling in order on in, on big international tournament stages, and this is an opportunity for Mexico to establish themselves, especially back in CONCACAF. They traditionally play a 4-3-3, and their center midfielders, they can spread out wide, and they use the width of the field a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. And if they have two front runners plus their outside backs and another center runner coming, the U.S. is going to be tested in their in their box because what Mexico likes to do they have Maria Sanchez on the left side they have Diana Ordonez up top mm -hmm. who is just such an incredible aerial presence Mexico will be whipping crosses into the box looking to get on the back side of things and that's a way that the U.S. can be tested when they go up against them and there's a huge target and it's, it's plus it's a rivalry yeah. of North America oh yeah USA Mexico um, always is fun all right let's talk about some of the other the dark horses yeah in this competition who what what team uh, has the biggest chance to kind of make some noise on this stage there are two teams that can make noise one of them is Haiti who will be playing against Puerto Rico as a play-in game so they already have extra competition for them going into this match they were without defender Roselord Borgella a veteran for this Haitian side and Melchi Dumornay the young superstar that is coming up they have not been released from their club teams for this tournament so a lot of pressure is going to fall on the shoulders of midfielder Shirley Judy. She can play in the midfield. She'll switch the ball from side to side. She gets shots from distance. And Nerla Mondesir, who 
Holy cow, can this player shoot from distance in one of the qualifiers? She had a bullet from about 35 yards out against Costa Rica that just silenced everyone. So Haiti has some, some players within them that can find the back of the net, can shoot, and can score. Another team that everyone needs to keep an eye out for is Costa Rica. Hmm. This is a side that scores a lot of goals. Over 50% of their goals come from crosses throughout the qualifiers. They can use the width of the field, and they're not afraid to send the ball in and throw bodies on it. It's not always the cleanest goals when they find the back of the net, but they're aggressive, they're scrappy, and Costa Rica is looking to establish themselves in, in CONCACAF. That we're at this really cool place in Con CONCACAF where different teams are making different impressions. We've got new coaches coming in. We have new opportunities for these clubs and these federations to say, we are taking our women's program seriously, and it starts with this W Gold Cup. All right. <laughs> I was going to ask first, I want to give you props. The nails matching the kit. I know. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I is. saw it. I see the vision. You know, I also want to give a shout out to Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. The women's teams still have a chance. They still have a chance. It's huge for the Latin side of the, of the Caribbean mm -hmm. nations. But I want to talk about uh, maybe some players that maybe some of the fans watching may not recognize, may not know who to look out for. Anyone in particular that's caught your eye that you think might uh, shine a little bit in this competition? Yeah. So Munda Sear for Haiti, for sure. She's a player that can play up top. Um, she can get in and around the box. She led the team in assists as well throughout the qualifiers for Haiti. Uh, for Costa Rica, Rocky Rodriguez in the midfielder. You may know her from all of her time mm -hmm. at Portland Thorn. She's now traded to a different club in the NWSL. Um, but this is a player that it, it makes a difference for Costa Rica. And a lot of the pressure falls on her shoulders. And she never looks like she feels any of the pressure. So it's really impressive to watch from there. Um, it, these are a lot of NWSL fans watching this. Alexis, there are 45 NWSL players Ooh. competing on nine wow. teams in this. That's pretty cool. That's that pretty is dope. Really, really cool. What are your plans for W Gold Cup? Are you on our coverage? I am on the coverage uh -huh. right here on the Lazo Network. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. More Lisa Carlin is always a good thing. Uh, thank you so much for coming.